Hi everyone. Today's lesson is part of B2 and it is more specifically part of the ecology topic. So the learning objective today is to know how water is cycled and to name the processes by which water is cycled and also to understand the process of global warming and its consequences. So please can you pause the screencast now, write down your learning objective and then unpause when you've done that. Okay, excellent. As always, um, please can you pause the screencast and complete these 10 retrieval practice questions. Okay, hopefully you have completed them now. If you've got a green pen, please use it. If not, just use a different colour. So number one, the word equation for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide plus water and then an arrow oxygen plus glucose. Number two, the limiting factors are light, temperature or carbon dioxide. Please make sure you've not written water as water is not classed as a limiting factor. Number three, plants photosynthesize in the chloroplasts. Number four, the four types of pathogen are bacteria, virus, fungus and protist. And number five, diabetes is described as a non-communicable disease because it is not spread from organism to organism and it is not caused by pathogens. Okay, B2. So these are questions from B2. The five you've just done were from B1. Number one, which process do plants do that take carbon out of the atmosphere? That is photosynthesis. Number two, a process that puts carbon back into the atmosphere is either respiration or combustion. Number three, um, examples of a carbon sink. The ocean is a carbon sink and also peat bogs are carbon sinks as well. Number four, predators and pathogens are living things, therefore they are biotic factors. And number five, which molecule do plants make during photosynthesis that contains carbon? They make glucose, which they then go on to use for respiration. So make sure that you have self-assessed those questions before you move on. Thank you. Okay, a quick recap again. I know I've mentioned this already, but quickly, learning objective for the water cycle is to know how water is cycled and to name the processes by which water is cycled. And then we will move on to global warming, which your learning objective is to understand the process of global warming and its consequences. Make sure you've got those written down, please. Okay, so we are going to be looking at the water cycle. If you have got a pencil, um, I am going to ask you to draw something um, in a short while. So make sure you have got a pencil. If not, a pen is absolutely fine. So we are going to talk about how water is cycled um, within ecosystems. So this is the important um, diagram. Um, pause the screencast now and sketch it, please. Um, make sure that you have got those key processes in there. So I'm just going to talk you through it. There isn't that much within the curriculum that you need to know about the water cycle, but you do need to know these key processes here. So we're going to start where the ocean is there. Um, so water will evaporate from the ocean into the atmosphere. So that's your first process and it will become water vapour. Now, as it um, cools down, condensation will occur which will mean that it will become clouds. Now the continual cooling of those clouds um, causes them to become um, clouds further on on that diagram there if you can see in that top right hand corner there and then at certain times precipitation will occur so that is for example rainfall. So we've got let's just summarize that first part we've got the evaporation of water from the oceans and the water becomes water vapor and um, condensation occurs which um, causes the water to be stored within the clouds and then the water will um, fall from the sky which is called precipitation. The water will then either run along the ground and be taken in by um, plants and trees or surface runoff will it will end up back in oceans, streams, rivers, etc, etc. Now, um, in B1, we did this process here, which is transpiration. So water is taken in the roots, through the xylem, 
into the leaves where the water will move out of the leaves through the stomata and that loss of water through the leaves is called transpiration so you have to know that in B1 but obviously it's part of the water cycle as well and then the water is back in the atmosphere and becomes part of this cycle. There is also percolation where there will be gaps within um, the ground where water seeps through those gaps can then either be drawn up by the plants and trees or can end up back in streams or rivers or oceans so that's percolation so please spend a couple of minutes now if you haven't already pause the screencast and draw um, a sketch of that including the processes into your books please okay right moving on then global warming now um you are all too young to remember this advert, but I do remember this. Um, this was a Ron Seal advert for Woodstain, and the advert said does exactly what it says on the tin. Now, the reason that is on there is because global warming actually does exactly what it says. Um, the definition of global warming is an ongoing increase in the Earth's mean temperature. So the globe is getting warmer. OK, but obviously in an exam, please describe it as an increase in the Earth's mean temperature. Pause the screencast and make sure you've got that definition written down, please. OK, right, so we're going to talk about what causes um, global warming and the greenhouse effects, which we'll talk about in a minute. There are two main gases that contribute to global warming and cause this greenhouse effect to occur. So the first one we've mentioned before, because it's part of the carbon cycle, um, is carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is a main greenhouse gas and it is released due to um, humans burning fossil fuels. Um, the fact that humans cut down trees mean that less carbon dioxide is taken from the atmosphere. So deforestation contributes to this and also the destruction of peat bogs. So remember peat bogs are um, carbon sinks. So they have a lot of carbon in them. And when humans burn them as cheap fuel or for de um, destroying them and to get rid of them, they release a lot of carbon back into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. So make sure you've got those three th things written down. Carbon dioxide, burning fossil fuels, deforestation, destruction of peat bogs. Um, there is a second um, gas, which is methane. Now, methane um, is released due to three things, three main things decaying plants, cattle farming and rice farming. Now, the reason that um, rice farming is on there is because um, rice grows mostly in flooded field fields called rice paddies. Now, the water that is in those rice paddies um, blocks oxygen from getting into the soil, which gives a really good environment for bacteria um, to reproduce. And these bacteria release methane. So because of that rice farming, because of those water flooded fields, um, these bacteria have got a really good environment to reproduce rapidly. And therefore they um, release methane into the atmosphere. That's very similar to the decaying of plants because there are pathogens there that will release methane. And cattle farming, um, cows actually release methane as well. OK, so decaying plants, cattle farming and rice farming are um, how methane is added to the atmosphere. Make sure you've written those down, please. If you've missed any of that, go back a little bit on the screencast and just watch again. Thank you. OK, so um, there's a little task there for you to do. Describe what each of these graphs show um, and can you make any conclusions? Now, remember, a description is saying what you see. So you're not explaining anything in the first part of that task. You are just describing. And a little hint here, if I'm describing a graph, I would always start with the X axes. So on both graphs, you would start by talking about the year. So, for example, from 1700 to 1850, the percentage of CO2 and then tell me what the percentage of CO2 is like and then describe what happens after 1850. Okay, pause the screencast, have a little go. Okay, so first graph there, um, 1750 to 1850, the percentage of CO2 in the atmosphere stays constant at 0.028. 
from 1850 up to about 1990, 1980, 1990, um, there is quite a fast um, rate of incre increase of the percentage of CO2 in the atmosphere all the way up to 0 0.035. So that's your description of that first graph on the left hand side. On the right hand side, um, this time from 1860 up to again about 1990, 1995, you can see that the global average ten, um, temperature um, is increasing from 1860 to 1990. It also um, worth mentioning that this does show a correlation. OK, so you ca you could um, assume that because the percentage of CO2 going up from 1850 is causing the temperature um, to rise, it's actually a correlation rather than causation, which means that um, critics are actually saying that it could be a coincidence. Now, scientists believe um, they have enough evidence to show that there's definitely a correlation between the two but critics will still say that it is coincidental. OK, so global global warming has been caused by something called the greenhouse effect. Now, if you've ever been into a greenhouse, particularly in summer, you will find that they are absolutely um, boiling places to be. They're really, really warm. Now, that's because of the glass that they are made of. So as the um, sun's rays enter the greenhouse, some of them will reflect and be able to escape, but some of them will be kept within that greenhouse, warming it up, which is why it's a really good place for plants to grow. Now, please um, don't forget that the greenhouse effect, we do need some of that um, energy to be trapped around our earth. Otherwise, it would be too cold for the earth to sustain life. So although we talk about greenhouse effects leading to global warming, we do need some of those gases around the earth to actually keep some of that um, heat energy trapped so that the earth is warm enough to enable us and other organisms to survive. But unfortunately, what is happening is too many gases, or this is what scientists believe, too many gases are being released. So um, the uh, earth is warming too much. This hopefully will make more sense when we look at the next slide. OK, again, um, this will be on for a couple of minutes, so please ske sketch as I talk. But you do, if you want to pause it straight away and sketch it, and then I will talk through, that's absolutely fine. So this is a, um, a diagram to show you what is actually happening. So we've got the Earth here, OK, we've got... Um, some of the greenhouse gases around the earth which are needed but pollution is adding to them um, and that's where the um, radiation is being trapped. Now please remember we do need that to be there, it's just that the greenhouse gases are um, increasing too much. So the solar radiation, so the radiation from the sun um, is reaching the earth. Some will be absorbed, so you can feel that on a hot day. You can feel how hot the ground is beneath your feet. And some of it will be reflected back out. OK, so that's where, look where my um, cursor is. Some will be reflected back out. Now, what the greenhouse gases do is they trap some of the heat within the atmosphere. So if you look at this arrow here that's going back to the earth or this one over here that's going back to the earth, that is where the radiation is being trapped and it's causing the earth to warm. OK, so we've got a lot of the radiation reflecting out. We've got some being absorbed, but then we've got some being trapped because of these greenhouse gases. And that is causing the earth to warm. Make sure you've got this diagram written down please before you move on. Thank you. Okay so we're just going to look at what what does that mean? So the global warming, what, what does it mean the warming of the earth? What impact is it going to have? Now um, this question comes up a lot on exams and you need to be able to give a few examples. Now if they ask you the impact of global warming please do not write that it's causing the earth to um, warm or for the temperature increase because they assume that you know that. So what they're asking you is what is that temperature increase actually causing? So um, please 
jot at least, well, the, at least the ones that I point out here. Um, because of the change in temperature and because of the change of climate, animals and plants are, um, are either becoming endangered or becoming extinct. So an example would be the polar bears because the polar bears live on ice. So actually, if the ice um, is melting because of the increase in temperature, then the polar bears don't have anywhere to live they won't survive, they won't be able to reproduce and they will. Um, they possibly could become extinct. Another one would be then, um, linked to what we've just been talking about, rising sea levels. So rising sea levels, um, because of the ice caps melting, um, the sea levels are getting higher and all those um, tiny islands, for example, in the Pacific will become covered um, with the water because the sea levels are rising. Um, the increased temperature is causing more forest fires um, across the earth, um, which obviously is destroying animals, destroying plants and could possibly um, impact humans as well. So make sure that you've written down rising sea levels, threatening Pacific Island, ice caps melting, which could cause um, organisms such as polar bears to become extinct. You could also talk about the um, forest fires, which are destroying habitats, so destroying plants, destroying animals, um, and could co be catastrophic for humans as well. So make sure you know some of the impact of global, global warming, please. Okay, to finish off, there are 10 questions. Please, can you complete the 10 questions? Um, if you are working from home, please make sure that you send the answers to your biology teacher. Thank you for listening. Well done for completing the work included in this screencast. Have a lovely day. Take care.